Um, I'm here talking about slow food. Um, what is slow food? We're one of those organisations that's often out there and people don't always know what we are and what we're really standing about. Um, in fact, I recently gave a talk to the Surrey WI, which was far more scary than this, I can tell you. It's <laughs> jazzing in the front of their looking at me. And it was just before lunchtime, they were peering at me and peering at me and peering at me. And it suddenly clicked, they thought I was there to teach them to casserole. And I was actually talking about food issues, and that was perhaps the most terrifying thing I've done for a long time. But anyway, um, slow food, um, we're an international movement. Um, we're one of the largest um, food manufacturers in the world. Um, we're active in 156 countries. Um, so we've got a great deal of diversity in what we do, and we do different things in different places. Um, it's about food actually having a sense of place, about supporting small scale agriculture, supporting food to consumers. Again, joking, I was kind of described as a dating agency. We take producers, we take consumers, and we match them up. I'm not here to sell them a thing, I've got nothing to sell you, never wanted to sell it. But we're here talking about those issues and what we do. Because of that, we're actually partnered with the UN. Um, we are the only organisation which is in solely in food that's part of the UN, and that's again because um, the way that we're funded, we don't take money from, from seed companies and food companies, and that's very, very important to us. So the bottom yeah, we're reconnecting really consumers with food and culture. Good, clean and fair is our strap line. Um, it's an Italian translation, and with no disrespect to any Italians in the, in the house, it's not the greatest in translation. What it means um, is that all food should be good quality and good for you. It should be clean, so it should be produced in a sustainable way, sold in a sustainable way, um, and should be fair. The producer should get a fair price, and so should you. You shouldn't actually need a second mortgage to eat well or or um, to go shopping. Um, so we've then spent a little on food. And that's another shocking statement really. Many of us think, well, food's really expensive. And when I go to talks and events, people say, check, I really don't have any money to buy food. But actually, um, the last figures from the National Office is that we have 11.6% of our household budget is now spent on food. If you're an average Londoner, you spend more money going out, spending money on alcohol, cigarettes, um, and your takeaways than you do eating at home. That's the average Londoner. Um, and I think it's really, really interesting, and it has something which um, really impacts on retailing in London, um, our wider urban environment. Um, what does that really mean? Where are our shops? Are we going to have more restaurants? How does that all kind of fit in? Um, so, food challenges in the city. Um, well, it's quite hard to produce food in the city. Um, it sounds very, very obvious, but actually, land values are really, really high. You've got a nice patch of ground that you want to grow some food on, or you want to make some food on. Um, and that's really quite difficult. One, even if you find the space, there's all kinds of planning regulations about transport and uh, getting, getting things in there. And you actually probably have a greater depth of knowledge about that than I do. But if you've got wider land and you actually want to grow something there or produce something there, you're actually going to be competing with housing. And housing, the cost of land in London, is, is something which is really, really driving food actually out of the, out of the city. Um, independent shops face high fixed costs. So again, if I'm running a local shop or a quality independent shop, then I'm actually going to be competing against someone who actually wants to turn my shop and renting that into housing property. Um, because the rental value or the yield on that property is less than housing. So actually landlords have got a real incentive to actually turn um, retail outlets into housing. And if you live in the centre of London, uh, or some of you will do, some of the councils actually have a policy of actually turning retail into housing. Westminster City Council certainly does. So we're getting this kind of you know, uh, lack of community, and these local shops are really, really awkward about. Um, generally sitting with the trays, does this really matter? Well, we think it really does matter. So, you know, people aren't taught to be butchers anymore. When, when you're at university or when you're going to, uh, into college, you know, you're advised to go and be architects. You're advised to, as I was, to go and be a chemist. No one's told to go and, you know, go and work in food. No one's told, it'd be great if you want to be a butcher to be a butcher. So, those kind of things are dying out because people are actually aging. Um, so, if you go to a local butcher shop, you go to a local green grocery shop, they're probably approaching retirement. Um, so we're losing the skills and the, you know, in terms of apprentices coming into that, that's also really, really important. Um, why is that particularly the case in London? Why is that particularly the case in the city? So again, it's actually about this top one, it's about housing. Because the value that we put on retail workers is actually not that much different in London than actually back 
home in Cornwall where I grew up. They're pretty similar, but the housing costs and the cost that one has are very, very different. So it's very hard to be a retail worker here in London or in other big cities. Um, so I'm, I'm going to really have to, uh, to, to flip through. So food, right, right, quality food is value. The world in the state totally regenerated Marlowe. I used to live in Marlowe, as hard as it is to imagine when I went there, half of it was bought about the four charity shops there. The world in the state said, well, let's regenerate that. They did that on the back of quality food. Interestingly now that the, the, the clothes shops can afford even higher rates, the are now removing the food stores which actually totally regenerated the area and replaced it and now replacing it with, with clothing. Farmers markets are trading at record levels. Food is now, is now a, a hobby, it's, it's a leisure activity. We watch food on the television, we buy cookery books, we go to the farmers market even though we don't eat very much anymore. <laughs> um, there is a small but growing number of craft and artisan stores reopening capital wide. It kind of um, contradicts what I said earlier, but there is this kind of resurgence in very small amounts of saying, wouldn't it be really, really cool if we got together and made a little craft bakery or we had a little um, green grocers? It's happening in small scales, it's happening on the edges of the city where land is a bit cheaper. Then we've got food buying groups such as Food Assembly, Farm Drop, Farm Direct. These will aggregate food from outside the capital and bring it in. It's another way that quality food is coming into the capital. So, so food plays a part in this. We encourage urban agriculture to continue to grow, um, highlights regional and national quality food, advises businesses to improve citywide on food sourcing. We teach skills, and what we do is about education. We go into schools, we go into community groups, and we teach basic skills that people can actually um, learn those things, those trials. Um, we produce garlic listings and food banks to highlight alternative ways of eating. You go onto our website, you see things like this. It will tell you where there's quality food near you. Or you can type a postcode in, and then you're looking for a butcher, there they will be close to you. Um, and we also do a lot in schools and community groups. There's one of our gardens here, great iconic um, picture there with the gherkin behind. I'm actually saying we can produce food here in the city, but being realistic, it is always on a fairly small scale. Um, so every fourth of shapes our, our city. Um, I'm going to leave this here, I'm going to leave that there for you because I have been waved at and I can speak for six hours, not six minutes. <laughs> um, but it does determine whether we have local shops or food desert. It contributes to our local economy and the reason that's also important is you lose your local shops, you lose your local post office, you lose your local green grocer, you lose your local accountants and actually not only in a food desert, we're in a desert full stop, just in a residential desert. So thank you very much for having me here.